let's talk a bit about Mikado because it was yes. a, a, you know, a stunning production that we all remember. Um, and Cynthia cut this costume. Yes. Now Cynthia McClellan, the cutter, said this costume was the most difficult she ever cut. I think so. Was that your fault or the ambition or? All of the above, <laughs> all of the above. Brian, it was the first show I'd done with Brian McDonald. He said I wanted some, he wanted something beautiful. He really left it open to me. I showed him some ideas for a set and the one he chose was these sort of water lily packs. And again, it goes back to the festival, the emphasis on the actor and the costume. And I always tended to design simple sets so that the emphasis really went on to the actors and the costumes. And luckily, Brian was very imaginative in the way he approached it. But because of that, he wanted it to be beautiful. And at that time, you couldn't find books on Japan on Japanese costumes. I went down to Spadina in the back of the a Korean grocery store, there were a couple of books. So I had to go from my imagination. I'd grown up with the Doily Cart Opera Company in Britain and the traditions of Gilbert and Sullivan, but this had to be new and different because it was the first time out of copyright. And up he just until said, that time. be beautiful? Yeah. I want something beautiful. I want something flexible and something beautiful. And I thought about it, I thought about children's book illustrations. And I just started putting it down on paper, and they were some of my best um, designs on paper. I don't have any of them now, but they were. They disappeared into, with, into different people's collections. But with that one, it took Cynthia, myself, and Lisa Hughes, the painter, and the person dying to work out a process. None of us, and this was 81, Silk dyeing, ombre dyeing was not part of the public know-how. The dyes had to be experimented with. The dyeing processes had to be experimented with. How we put it together had to be experimented with. If I were to present that design now, no way would they do it. Did you have any idea of the pattern that she would have to draft to make this? Or is I, that not part of your responsibility? You draw the I shape. I talk to her, and this is why I think it's important for a designer to be able to draw, because of a lot of what you do, you talk about, it's done in drawing, it's visual. You draw a shape. And I drew the sort of basic shape I thought it should be. Now, Cynthia is so experienced, and the sort of cutter that is a true artist in her own right, a sculptor in her own right. And in fact, I know it was very much collaboration. I do wonder well, what she would have done if I hadn't been around with that. I think you, and again, this goes back to the approach to design. When I designed at the festival, I always had my hand on everything. I, w I was a control freak, but I think that's why the shows all came together and had a style that people recognised because it was me coming through with the people I've worked with. But in that case, we had to work out, was it applique, was it painting, was it dyeing? Every piece of that costume, and Cynthia did a brown paper pattern for me, and I drew on the brown paper, I drew those patterns, because you can't see the other side. The other side wasn't exactly the same as this side as far as the design went. If you had four different cutters making this costume, you, would you have four slightly different costumes? Yes, I think so. I think so. So my Or if you built it in four different theatres, you would have had a very different one. Because somebody might have said, oh, we'll paint a whole lot. We won't do any applique. It'll just all be painted. Right. So th that this had different textures happening. It was some painting, some applique where you put another fabric on top of another fabric. And of course, it had to be very cleverly constructed because it starts, in technically you start to pull, fabrics start to pull with the weight on them where there's too many layers, things like that. So that's an area where Cynthia would advise. And 
she and Lisa Hughes, who painted a lot of that, worked out a lot of the things, would often confer when I wasn't necessarily there. Right. And so th this exchange of ideas and ways of doing things, but that took, I mean, the shoes on the Mikado, let alone that costume, you would not believe the amount of work that went into, I could tell them what I wanted for the shoes, but to make them hang together for all those months, to stay on the dancer's feet. You know, you think of a thong sandal staying on the dancer's feet. How do you make it work? Roughly, well, do you remember the budget? I don't, love. I don't. But I think it brought it in. If you think that production came back for three years mm -hmm. running, went on tour to the Old Vic, got a tremendous reputation for the festival, went on tour around the States, went to New York, was nominated for Tony's, went across Canada, the whole of Canada. It became a tremendous PR vehicle, mm -hmm. came back here again, and then went to the, to the National Arts Centre, and there were over 500 performances. So they made their money back one way and another in buckets because that house sold out mm -hmm. every night. And the whole production was a team effort.